Ah, UConn cannot wait until Thursday because they're going to finally win a postseason game for the first time in three years. An odd drought for Jim Calhoun's team up against UT Chattanooga. The winner there faces the winner between BYU, Texas A&M, Purdue up against Northern Iowa, and the Pac-10 regular season champs from Washington up against the surprise in the SEC, Mississippi State, clinching the SEC tournament championship earlier today. Coach Lapis, UConn, what do they have to prove still? It doesn't seem like much. They're a one seed, but people seem to doubt them. They don't have anything to prove. They have one of the best front lines in America. Sheem Thabit, a terrific shot blocker. Jeff Adrian, tough on the glass. Neither one a great, great score. They can score some points, but not a great score. And this is where having lost Jerome Dyson really hurts. He was a great scorer. He could go off the dribble. He could create when they needed something to happen. And he was their best perimeter defender. With him gone, it's a little different. A.J. Price has the load of the perimeter scoring is on him. And they have no depth. They play Craig Austrian. They play Stanley Robinson. Great defensive team, as we said. And they'll make it hard for you to score. The question is, can they score enough points when their two big guys aren't scoring big numbers? Now, we've seen Kemba Walker step up as well as the season's gone on. And a UConn team that lost to Pitt twice. Lost to Georgetown very early on in the year. And then, of course, the, the six-overtime marathon <laughs> against Syracuse. And uh, I, I don't think any team wants to play six overtimes once this tournament no. gets going. Because if the legs, they'll, you'll lose them. Takes a lot out of you. But Connecticut's got a great team. They just ran into, you know, Pitt's a, a juggernaut with the big guy inside, Dwan Blair. But Connecticut got a chance to win the whole thing, even without Dyson, who's a great player. All right, let's dive back more into this uh, West Region bracket. Purdue, a team that just won its Big Ten championship, first time they've ever done that, uh, up against Northern Iowa, and it's that dreaded 5-12 spot. It's scary. I went down and went down hard when I was a number five uh. at the University of Virginia. That's why I'm on Boot Hill. But uh, <laughs> Purdue's got a great team. They're finally getting healthy. Robbie Hummel was a preseason player here in the Big Ten, had back problems. He's healthy now. Chris Frame is a great leader. He was the Big Ten defensive player of the year last year. He's a great defender, had a broken nose, broken elbow, kept playing, a lot of guts. So I think Purdue's going to make a big run. And here you have the four seed Washington Bruiser up against the Mississippi State team that, you know, had nothing to lose now. And uh, hey, not just happy to be here. They're an SEC power looking to uh, make a statement still. Washington got a lot of bodies. Nine guys play between 16 and 30 minutes a game. That's a, that's a great distribution of minutes. Plus in Washington, they seem like they sub one guy. He's like the guy he took out of the game. So uh, Justin Brockman is a really good uh, big man. Isaiah Thomas has played great. He has played, hasn't played like a freshman all year. But I tell you what, Washington just keeps coming. They can sub, 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 sub. So there's one of those teams that great defensively because they wear you down. Regular season Pac-10 champs outright for the first time. First conference championship in the regular season outright since 1953. Let's go to the bottom half now of that West region. Marquette, a team that struggled after they lost Dominic James down the stretch up against Utah State. Missouri back in the tournament for the first time since 2003 up against the Ivy League champ Cornell. Cal and Maryland, great at-large matchup. And then Memphis playing in Kansas City on Thursday up against Cal State Northridge. And uh, Pete, let's get educational here. Cornell back-to-back -back Ivy champs. First time anyone other than Penn or Princeton's done that in decades. What makes this team good? Cornell's a very cerebral team. I don't know what the word means, but you guys are very intelligent. So Cornell does. Throw it out there. They know what it is. But they're a tremendous three-point shooting team. They're back-to-back -back Ivy League champs. They beat, you know, all the guys in the Ivy League. They played Stanford last year. A real big team. Now they get a challenge playing against Mizzou, who's really quick and athletic. But they got great guards. Ryan Whitman's a terrific player. Also, they got uh, Lewis Dale. So I think they got a chance to make a run at Mizzou. I don't think they can beat them, but I think it's going to be an excellent game. And, and we talked about Marquette here also, Coach Lapis. Here's a team. After James went down, they did lose some games, but they lost them to the best teams in the Big East Conference. They had the best perimeter in America. When you have Jarrell McNeil and Wesley Matthews on the wings and a guy like Lazar Hayward, who's a three-point shooting foreman, they created so much space and had a guy like Dominic James who could get in the lane and distribute and made a difference. Now Maurice Acker has to take his place. Hadn't played a lot all year, so he's going to have his hands full. But this team, tough defensively. Buzz Williams, Buzz Williams has done a great job with them, and they did. They lost a tough game to Villanova in the Big East tournament. They were down 17 in the second half, came back, lost by one. This is going to be a tough team, even without Dominic James. All right, now you see the stats of the guys that have stepped in in place. Three guys averaging at least 16 points a game. And that makes you good. And plus, they're also a very good a very good defensive team, and that obviously is going to be a big key. So they have guys that can step up for them, that can put big numbers up at any moment. Each one of these guys can score 25 in a game. That's what they're going to need to make up for the loss of James. All right, meanwhile, the two seed here, not to be uh, not to be left out, Memphis uh, might have been that fifth one seed, as was discussed before the show. You talk about reloading the way Bill Self did at Kansas, Bruiser. John Calipari, your old boss, he did it with Memphis here, too. Did it. And let me tell you what, 
I hope you don't struggle to score because you won't score against these guys. They've seen them in person. They shut you out. They shut you out. <laughs> I played them this year. So defensively, they're as good as you get. Not only that, too, they are one of the longest teams you will ever see at the collegiate level. Plus two, Antonio Anderson, Robert Dozier, all-time winning this, uh, seniors in the history of college basketball. That says a lot. Four 30 win uh, seasons in the, in the last four years. Yeah, first so, time. right, first first time a team's ever done that. So, they're legit. And I think people, they look at their conference, but when you see those guys in person, the way they get after it, the way they play, uh, they're going to be a team that's going to be tough to be reckoned with. One, because defensively, they're as good as you're going to get.